thank you again for having me, everybody. I'm so uh, so pleased to be here, to be with everyone. Today, I'm, I'm going to speak um, a little bit about data and innovation in the out-of-home space, and um, I hope you enjoy what I've, I've put together. For those of you who don't know me, hello, my name is Amanda Dornberg. Uh, I am currently the president of COMB, which is the Canadian Out-of-Home Marketing and Measurement Bureau. <laughs> Please feel free to follow me on the social channels to the left or the content channels sort of to the right uh, of my screen. I'm very active uh, in this space, actively contributing to uh, various different media outlets, speaking about the importance of out-of-home, <clears throat> the importance of innovation and data within out-of-home as well. So. I uh, would love to connect with you all. Please feel free to reach out. Uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with COM, COM is, uh, as I mentioned, the Canadian Out of Home Marketing and Measurement Bureau. <clears throat> we are the national association uh, for the out of home industry, and we provide both marketing as well as measurement services. Uh, so, what that means is we're sort of a hybrid um, association <clears throat> that both provides the currency by which the industry transacts upon, which would be your uh, circulation, essentially a representation of volume of, of audience, as well as your impression. So the extrapolation of how many people out of that audience um, garnered an impression. And we'll talk about how we do that in a little bit. Um, and then we also provide marketing services to the industry. So we're really an active voice within the, within the landscape uh, not just on the Canadian side of things, but internationally, multinationally, and globally as well, um, which is, I'm grateful to be here to, to speak to you all today. Um, <clears throat> and really what our, our, our focus is from a marketing perspective is to showcase the value of out of home and its importance within the media mix. So we talk about media mix modeling, we talk about um, how we can incorporate out of home as a larger share of the total uh, ad advertising spend, if you will. Uh, so again, we're a very active part of the, the ecosystem in the out-of-home uh, landscape internationally. So that's just a brief <clears throat> little bit about who Comb is specifically. What I wanna talk to you guys today about uh, is new methodologies and new measurements, new initiatives that are happening globally, but specifically I'm going to highlight some of the initiatives that we're, we're taking on here in the Canadian landscape uh, and we will look to provide these services on a multinational basis if, if organizations or other countries are interested in uh, sort of licensing some of the approaches that we have taken. Uh, we are currently exploring how that could look as well. Um, we're fortunate to have a great deal of, of interest and exposure on a multinational perspective. And I think that is because we're a combination of both marketing and measurement. So we have the ability to be able to really highlight um, in a very effective way what we're doing from a, a measurement perspective. <clears throat> so for many years, we've been working on a new uh, outdoor methodology as well as a place-based methodology, uh, place-based being indoor. I'm, I'm going to focus predominantly today on some of the key innovations relative to outdoor, uh, some of the data sources that we're leveraging, <clears throat> some of the techniques that we're, we're using, and how, how we're really innovating and driving change uh, to be more complementary to other media formats, not necessarily competitive to. Uh, I always like to say that out of home is very complementary to other media formats, and we shouldn't be competing for uh, against the other uh, formats such as you know native online search social etc we should be complementary to that there's a lot of of uh, case studies and research out there that that really highlights very well the efficacy of out of home in combination with other media formats particularly in the digital space so <clears throat> today um, I'm going to speak a little bit about some of the sophisticated data science techniques that we have leveraged specifically to enhance the measurement offering uh, of out of home, uh, particularly in the Canadian landscape, but certainly there are um, other companies and, and organizations doing this on a global scale as well. So one of the really interesting innovations that uh, we have taken in the Canadian space <clears throat> is we've, we've ingested what we're calling a national data set. This national data set uh, is inclusive of over 6.7 million road segments. And when I say a road segment, it's a portion of road in between various different exit and entry points, if you will, or various different intersections. So it's not tied to an entry or exit point. 
it's a it's a an extrapolation of various different data sections within uh, in between those. So we have over 6.7 million of these road segments. It's it's a lot. Um, every single road across the country is mapped. So things like on ramps or off ramps of uh, highways, um, any type of side street, back street, it, they're all mapped within our system. And <clears throat> these road segments contain very powerful information uh, on an hourly basis. So we ingest directional vehicular and pedestrian volume within each of these road segments on an hourly basis. So we know on an average Tuesday at 2 p.m. exactly how many uh, cars or pedestrians are walking through each of these 6.7 million road segments. Um, additionally, we ingest um, and, and we're extrapolating out uh, a modernized reach and frequency methodology. So in most markets uh, from a global landscape, reach and frequency is an extra extrapolation of your, your GRP, your gross rating point. So, um, you know, in traditional out of home planning, GRPs have been used for a decades. Um, however, that was typically done at the market level. And what we have introduced is the ability to understand your reach and frequency, uh, not just at the market level, but at the face level, and then for digital at the spot or ad play level. This is available in the Canadian space in the top 45 markets across the country. Um, in Canada, we have well over 150 different markets from an advertising perspective, but the top 45 tend to be the ones where most of the national advertisers are, are looking to, um, to, to spend, if you will. Uh, additionally, we have introduced what we're calling audience profiling. And this is an understanding of demographic lifestyle and psychographic components. Um, so we also offer this in the top 45 markets across the country. And we have introduced this as a way to uh, provide more contextualization to our um, to our audience, to the, to the buyers and to the sellers, where you can dispel the notion that perhaps a physical board or physical face, whether it be digital or static, located in a neighborhood that could be perceived as less than desirable, uh, is actually garnering a very different audience than perhaps what is living around the board. So traditional audience segmentation was about Who's, who lives within a certain radius around a, a, a geographical location. And what we're looking at and what we've introduced is an understanding of who's actually passing by the board, not who's living around it. Um, so we look at a great deal of, of mobile location data. We ingest um, the information directionally of uh, devices that are passing by each of these locations. And then we're able to observe that to a home origin, which is in our terms, very simply defined as a, a device's um, persistently static location during sleeping hours over the course of our study period. And uh, that allows us to then take uh, the long and lat of that home origin and put it through um, like Statistics Canada, which gives us the, they, they have all sorts of survey data on, on consumers. It's the federal agency um, in the Canadian space that has all of the, the consumer information and the, the consumer surveys. Um, so that's how we're working with the audience profiling. Um, additionally, when it comes to pedestrian data in, in most markets, that was a relatively ad hoc uh, request where, you know, media owners might say, hey, I've got, I've got you know, a bunch of locations in, um, in Montreal and it's a very pedestrian centric uh, area. So could you go out and do a study? Now, what we've introduced is with these 6.7 million road segments, the, the linear sidewalks that are running parallel to, to the, uh, the in-town roadways, we do have pedestrian data for each of these segments. And then we're introducing what we're calling spot modeling for pedestrian data uh, in very pedestrian-centric hubs, which would be like a Young Dundas Square, which is basically the Times Square of, of Canada. Uh, so that's another enhancement that we're looking, um, that we've introduced. And then when it comes to vehicular occupancy, which is essentially a representation of the number of, uh, the average number of people within a car, um, historically that was done at the provincial level. And we're now moving down to the market level. And we're actually currently working on getting that down to the road segment level. 
Uh, so really trying to ensure that we provide granular data when it comes to understanding and extrapolating the, the potential audience that could be exposed. We did a really cool study um, last year and we looked at illumination hours. So, you know, in out of home, not every board is, is illuminated for 24 hours of, of the day. Some of them are partially lit, some of them are unlit um, and thus only can, can be visible during twilight hours or dawn to dusk, if you will, day, daylight. So we did a really interesting study uh, last year, a data science team looked at the geographical representation and disbursement of where each of the, the um, out-of-home billboards were, were, were located and understood the average twilight and, and sunset hours, so sunrise to sunset, and what, what the average amount of, of daylight was based on if you were further north within the, in the country or if you were a little more south within the country. Uh, and that was an interesting project because we have this data on an hourly basis. When I say this data, I mean our circulations, our impression data. We were able to really enhance uh, the illumination reporting to understand uh, exactly the peak outputs of circulation and impression by hour, if you will. Um, and so that was a really interesting project that uh, our data science team um, took on last year. And then Another enhancement that we've introduced, and, and this was this was a rationale to try to again be more complementary to other media formats. So, particularly on the digital side of our reporting. So, when we're looking at our digital out of home reporting, which is obviously an impression reporting versus just a standard circulation, uh, which is a representation of volume. On the impression reporting, uh, with respect to how we calculate a GRP, which of course is the extrapolation of your reach and frequency, your unique versus your repeat audience, if you will, uh, we've adopted the, uh, it's technically a broadcast term called spill, which is your out of market audience. And so we will not only report the in market audience of your specific target demographic, however, we'll also be reporting the out of market audience, which represents 1% or more of the specific target, uh, which is a really interesting um, way to, to, to look at your national campaigns. In the Canadian landscape, we have a, a, about 85% of our buys are, are national advertisers. And so uh, we, we really have to ensure that we're providing as much value to these national advertisers as well as the local regional but because 85 percent is is coming from national we need to be uh, highly complementary to other media formats and so the ability to to report out this spill audience uh, allows us to be more complementary when we're doing when when the buyers are doing sort of media mix modeling when we look at our digital uh, data sets since i'm on the topic of digital specifically <laughs> Uh, we needed to really amp up how we were reporting and how we were uh, calculating the impression outputs. And so historically in uh, the marketplace, there, there was no delineation between static and digital. It was just, the, there was one value that was being reported, which was a circulation. And of course with digital, we're sharing that share of voice with multiple advertisers. And thus, we really need to understand exactly how many potential impressions we're being able to deliver um, as a medium in order, again, to be uh, complementary to other media formats that the planners and buyers, whether they're 360 or omni-channel, buyers are, are looking to incorporate. So some of the, the additions that we have relative to a data set, so all of the information that I sort of just spoke to previously uh, is available right across the board for static as well as digital inventory. But with digital, we really needed to enhance and, and add in a few more ec extra sprinkles of, of uh, secret sauce, I guess. And so we, we ingest within those 6.7 million road segments. We also particularly for digital ingest what we call intersection flow data. And this is a representation and an understanding of what percentage of traffic turns left versus goes straight versus turns right at an intersection. And <clears throat> this is necessary for us to be able to understand the exact sort of volume of audience that's going by. And then we also need to understand the speed of that audience. 
so again, within that intersection flow data and within those road segments, um, that hourly road segment data that I mentioned, we have access to the average speed of the vehicles that are, are passing through these road segments. And then we apply an average speed factor for pedestrians. We, we did some proprietary studies that look at various different geographical regions to understand how fast a, a person walks, basically. Um, and so the intersection flow information, as well as the speed, gets combined with what we call a distance visibility zone. So in some, re in some regions, um, a, what we call a DVZ could be equated to an opportunity to see, so an OTS. Um, however, we, we parse that down a little bit further. So we take our distance visibility zone, which is the maximum distance area that an out-of-home asset could be visible from. And that varies depending on the size of the board, the placement, um, the flagging, the offset of where it is located in, in, um, uh, in comparison to the, the type of roadway that it's on. And we've applied distance factors. So for example, you know, a large format board that's on the side of a highway is 457 meters or 1500 feet if, if you um, prefer feet versus meters. And that distance visibility area really helps us to assign the data. So we look within that specific DVZ and our data science team applies each of the road segments that have the volume, that have the speed data, we look at the intersection flow information to understand, okay, within this distance visibility zone, we have, you know, 20% of cars moving left and 30% and going straight. Um, and then the other remaining percentage veers off to the right and they can no longer see the board, let's say. We look at that on a face-by-face -face basis. And, and in, in our market, that's about 70,000 locations across the country to really understand and extrapolate true analytics for each particular phase. This information helps us to understand a dwell time. And in order for us to get to an impression, that dwell time is really critical. Additionally, with the dwell time information, so we look at, at an understanding of how, how many ad plays are being played within a specific period of time. So in the Canadian market, we do have media owners that um, are in a, a loop-based environment. So perhaps they have a one minute loop and they've got six, 10 second spots. But we also have media owners that are loopless, completely loopless. And we have a, a great deal of programmatic uh, digital out of home here. We were one of the markets that was a very early adopter for programmatic digital out of home. We started um, back in 20, 16, I remember doing programmatic integration. So it, it, we've, we were definitely one of the early adopters relative to programmatic digital. Um, and so we have to understand the average ad plays uh, on, a, on a typical day. So we, we need to make a few assumptions within, within the math to, to really extrapolate an, an output of an impression. Uh, so we, I, we, we look at whether the media owner is a loop-based environment or whether they're loopless. And we can understand the average uh, spot exposure. So for example, if you have a dwell time that's 25 seconds, uh, you could potentially see on average 3.6 ad plays because we don't know exactly when you enter into the first spot. So you might see three, or you could exit at the end of, of a spot and then enter in at the, the beginning of a spot and maybe potentially see four. So we've done a, a, an extensive amount of research on uh, what this looks like to be able to understand based on various different spot lengths, various different speeds, various different geographical um, locations of, of out-of-home assets, what that ad exposure would be. And then, of course, the dwell time comes from uh, the, the, the distance and speed information. What's really interesting is, I know this is a lot of like technical data, but everything in our platform is built API first. Um, and so this is one of the, the great advancements, I would say with technology and data. As I said, everything that we have is on an hourly basis. So there's about 4,000 different hourly data points that we've got living and breathing in our backend architecture. Uh, that can be queried at any time via API. So we can connect directly with 
our media owner systems, we can connect directly with our buy side systems uh, all through API, and they can get as granular as they want. They could query, you know, just an average day information. They could query an average spot uh, information, or they could query specifically that information on an hourly basis. They could parse that up between, I want to understand hourly data just from a vehicular perspective or hourly data just from a pedestrian perspective. It's really quite advanced uh, what has been developed and, and you know, from an out-of-home perspective, how we're able to, to provide very similar analytics uh, to other media formats, such as you know, digital, native search, online, social, et cetera. Um, none of this would be possible without some of our key partners. And I, I do like to highlight uh, who these partners are. So Terralytics is a multinational um, company. They provide to us the road segment data. So that 6.7 million um, figure that I, I've mentioned a few times, they're our partner that we work with to, um, to build that. Helmerex is a Canadian-based uh, company. So they're, they're one of our SDK mobile location data providers. Um, they have a very robust understanding of, of consumer movements. They own... Uh, a number of um, very prominent um, mobile location apps, uh, such as the Weather Network, et cetera, uh, which actively require location services to be enabled. Um, so they have they have a very uh, strong presence here in the Canadian space. Uh, DOCMA is a multinational organization, although it is founded in Canada. They are a multinational organization that does reach and frequency modeling with us. Uh, so we've we've partnered together to really build out one of the most advanced reach and frequency methodologies um, within um, not just within Canada, but but from what we're seeing on a global scale. Uh, Manifold and Vivid Data are two partners of ours that we work with on the demographic, lifestyle, psychographic, and sort of behavioral components. So, you know, if if we're creating audience segmentations and audience targeting that. Uh, speaks to a specific demographic, whether it's male versus female or a specific behavioral component. So drinks coffee or um, is an act, lives an active lifestyle. Those are the two companies that we work with uh, that really provide um, some information on that. And then we layer this all together internally with our data science team uh, to really enhance and, and elevate out-of-home measurement. Um, so we're trying to ensure that Again, everything that, that is being put out from a data science perspective or from a measurement perspective is really complementary. It, it's enticing, but it also, uh, it can be competitive in the sense that, you know, that the data that we're providing is on par or better than some of the other data sources for other media formats. And that's something that's been really important to us as we've uh, worked through this evolution uh, of out-of-home measurements. <laughs> None of this, excuse me, none of this would be possible without our, our product, if you will. So we embarked about uh, two years ago on um, a new product development uh, process <laughs> where we, we, we couldn't find anything in market that was a pre-existing tool that really catered to our needs and that really sort of stood out. Um, and could handle both what we call production as well as planning. So we decided to build it ourselves. And uh, we built a tool called Roadmap, which uh, will launch in Canada in September. We're still sort of tweaking some of the features and functionalities, um, but it, it's very robust. Uh, it's, it's got a really sleek UX UI component to it. Um, and what you're seeing sort of on the screen here uh, is is a visual of the production side of things. When I speak about production and planning on the production side of things, we really catered this to inventory management. So it's really like media owner centric, if you will. Everything a media owner would need to do from <clears throat> new build. So if, if a media owner is looking to get an estimate on a potential new location, can log into Roadmap, they can put in the coordinates and roadmap will shoot back to them exactly what the circulation or the volume is, the impressions based on some assumptions of a loop structure or loop less structure. All of that is built in systematically. So literally log into a web-based interface. They can, uh, they can get these, these estimates. They can then turn that inventory from 
uh, just a simple estimate where, you know, I was just querying potentially what this could look like to an active location that they can actually then start to garner additional information, such as the reach and frequency uh, and the audience segmentation side of things. So this, this tool manages all 70,000 locations right in one centralized web-based hub. It's, it's all permissions. So each media owner only sees their assets, but my comb team and my data science team sees everything. Um, there's triggers built within it that if a new location is being added, uh, you know, my, my team on the data science side of things get an get a email notification or a trigger within their inbox in Roadmap um, that identifies that they have something that they need to look at. And then all of this flows right through into a really sleek um, planning side of things. And the planning side is certainly geared more towards the, the buyers, uh, where the buyers can uh, leverage an interactive map that's got you know, a left sidebar for filtering. It's got a drawer that comes up that has a tabular form with your, your data visualization component and a mapping side of things a right-hand read bar that's churning real-time insight. So as you're filtering uh, within the map itself, uh, the right-hand read is uh, updating your, based on, on what is being displayed uh, within the map and it's updating the audience segmentation, it's updating the impression output, again, everything based on what's in the screen, in the filter um, mapping environment. And the buyers can then take that tool and, or take a plan that they've created, let's say within Roadmap, and then reach out directly to the media owners to try and execute that plan. So we really tried to ensure that we were uh, able to, to not just house all of this data that, that we have, you know, it's, it's very robust. Our, our backend architecture is built on a, a platform called Snowflake, which is a database management and we can talk through if anybody has questions about the, the tech stack or um, is curious about Roadmap itself, um, feel free to reach out. because we're, we're happy to do uh, demos of the product um, on more private uh, stages, if you will, not as public as this one. Um, but we'd be happy to, to share insights. Um, we really wanted to ensure that we had a, a tool that was powerful enough to handle this data. And again, because we couldn't find anything in the marketplace, we we had to build it ourselves. Uh, and I have to say that I'm very pleased with what we have developed uh, thus far. All in all, in summary, uh, we have been very, very busy working through um, enhancing out-of-home measurements. And it's something that we're very passionate about. We speak uh, openly on, on global stages about how we're, how we're doing certain things. And we take uh, ideas from other markets. Um, we take insights from other markets and try to really learn the best practices. We learn various different uh, unique approaches to whether it be outdoor or place-based. Um, and we're really trying to, to bring out of home and measurement in out of home to the forefront of uh, the advertising industry overall. Um, so if anybody has any questions, uh, I would love to hear from you and just Thank you so much for your time. This is sort of shameless self-promotion because we are doing an out-of-home awards. Um, it's the first in Canada uh, on May 25th, and there is an international award. The submissions are closed, but we did receive an overwhelming amount of international submissions and, and submissions overall. Uh, so very grateful for this, and um, thank you very much. <laughs>